Edo Arctic 2, Polar Research for Education, innovative program in Poland and Norway. Webinars. Uh, the Polar Bear lesson is connected with our project Edo Arctic 2. So uh, it is uh, the webinar connected also with the educational toolkit. And about the toolkit, I will tell you a little bit in the end of our classes um, where you can find more materials concerning the polar bear. Okay, uh, so um, there is a polar bear. Um, our hero of today's classes. Uh, so, oh yeah. Hello, I can see more uh, participants. So I'm very glad because uh, the time is very early. Uh, yeah, so uh, in this photo, you can see the male polar bear. It's a very nice question. What uh, bear we can see, female or male? It's hard to say for the very first sight because uh, when we can see the alone polar bear and it is very, um, very often and we can very often see it alone because uh, only during the mating season or when we have uh, the mother with the cubs, it is the only two situations or maybe when we have a lot of food on the seashore like uh, that whale and uh, the polar bears are grouping around. So the three situations when we can see the polar bear one more than a one, oh, let's say. So um, when we have an opportunity to see the female and male polar bear in the same time, the male is bigger. The weight is approximately 500 uh, kilograms and the female is uh, 20, uh, about uh, 300 uh, kilograms. So, but uh, when we um, are thinking about the details, uh, the, uh, the body is a little bit thinner around the neck and uh, the neck is a little bit longer than in the male um, case. So there are very, uh, very detail, uh, um, very detailed features. But uh, I will I will show you some photos of uh, female polar bear, and it would be much more easier to distinguish them. Uh, there are approximately 19 populations of polar bears around the world. Of course, we are th thinking about the Arctic area because uh, it is the habitat, natural habitat of polar bears. Uh, the Arctic is a region in the northern hemisphere around the so North North Pole. It is not only the Arctic Ocean, but as well the northern uh, territories of some countries like Russia, Norway, um, US, Canada, and so on. So uh, 19 populations, it means that they are observed in different parts of the Arctic, but um, it is possible that they contact with each other, but um, due to a thinner um, surface of the sea ice, the populations uh, can't contact so often, like it was uh, a few decades ago. So there are some threats and the scientists emphasize it that, for example, the polar bear might mate uh, among only their own population and it means that in the future it might uh, result in not so much uh, variety of uh, genetic variety of those populations. So it might cause some diseases, uh, weaknesses of um, and, and other individuals and so on. So there are some threats connected with the uh, global warming. Um, and uh, with the global warming, the sea ice surface in the Arctic is decreasing. So the polar bears can't uh, hunting for seals and can't travel uh, to, the, uh, to the longest distances like it was um, some time ago. But um, the situation is still under observation. So 
there are many trends but we will see in the future what will be uh, those times that will come for the polar bears. Uh, in the Arctic, we have uh, approximately from 20 to 25,000 of polar bears. So it's quite a huge number uh, because, um, of course, there are some territories, there are some countries where hunting for polar bears is still allowed, but um, for example, in, Nor in Norway, from 73, it is strictly forbidden. So it means that there are some regulations that might help uh, polar bears to survive. So the humans are more and more aware of uh, the importance of that species in the Arctic. So um, yeah, the global warming affects the polar bears populations, but they also they are able to adapt to changing an environment somehow. So, yeah, we need to observe all the situation. Uh, we will focus today on the population of polar bears that living close to the Barents Sea area. It is uh, up to almost 4,000 uh, individuals. So, nice information is that uh, that number is stable because, for example, Norwegian scientists are monitoring uh, the polar bear situation around that uh, area. Uh, on the left photo, there are some roads marked by blue arrows of uh, polar bears uh, um, traces, roads, uh, close to the Svalbard archipelago. So it means, and you can see it very clearly, that they are very dependent of the sea ice. If we have much sea ice, like on that uh, map, uh, it is marked in white color, it means that there would be more polar bears because they are able to travel to the long distances. So, for example, when I worked in Polish Polar Station Horizont, it is a Polish scientific base located in the southern part of the Spitsbergen. Uh, as you can see, it is uh, one of the points on the polar bears roads. So, uh, for example, when we have the polar night, we were observing every time, every day, satellite maps, uh, with the data of uh, sea ice and uh, when the sea ice was uh, increasing it indicated that we might expect the visits of polar bears and it was true we observed the connections between those phenomena on the right side there is a typical photo of uh, people who are working at the station and are going to the field because um, Polar bears are the main threat for humans in the Arctic areas, like in Svalbard Archipelago and Spitsbergen. So every person who worked uh, at Polish base needs to have a gun. And of course, after before going to, to Svalbard, uh, he or she participates in a special shooting training. And after that, obtains uh, special documents that are all, that allowed to obtain again um, for one year on a Svalbard area. Uh, so, of course, if we are going to the field, we can't do it alone with uh, at least one person more uh, with gun with themselves to protect us against the polar bears. Only the guns are for protection. We are uh, we, we can't. Uh, hunt for the polar bears because it's strictly forbidden. Bear family is a very nice examples, example of uh, the cousins of polar bear. Uh, I, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cousins of uh, polar bear that belong to uh, bear family. Uh, I only mark the names of the species that are maybe not so obvious for us. Uh, but of course, uh, the individuals like uh, giant panda and brown bear don't need to be presented uh, because we know them very well, I think. And they, 
that are also belong to the same family. So uh, the birds la live around the world, we can say, and of course there are some distinguishes, uh, distinguishing features among them, but of course it belongs to the one family of predators. On the left side, there is a hybrid. Hybrid, uh, which means the um, two species joined in the one. So it is called Peasley, the hybrid of polar bear and grizzly bear. Uh, why we can observe something like this? Uh, because due to climate change and decreasing of sea ice in the Arctic, polar bear are going inside the land because uh, they are not able to swim so, for so long on, in the open sea ice, so they spend more time on the shore and go inland. So it means that they might uh, meet another uh, birds on the way, so, and they can mate, why not? So in the, uh, as a result, we can observe uh, such kind of an individual, uh, which has uh, the features of uh, one and the, the second species. Um, now that kind of hybrids, the Peasley hybrids, we can observe in the Alaska area, but maybe it would be also the future of the polar bear. They may mate, they will mate with the other bear species um, because of the, some changes in the climate. So now it's rather a curiosity, scientific curiosity, but maybe in the future we will observe more uh, such kind of individuals. We were, um, we talked uh, before about the ability to adapt of the polar bears to the climate change and the uh, climatic conditions. We can observe it uh, very clearly because the Arctic is a very special environment due to the very sharp long winters, uh, short summers, short vegetation period, um, midnight sun and polar night phenomenon. So the species, the animals that live in that uh, area need to adapt uh, somehow to that sharp climate. So. Um, we said that um, sea ice is very important for the polar bears uh, because uh, they hunt thanks to it and they might travel. So uh, when we are talking about the hunting for a seals mainly because it is the main ingredient of polar bears diet, um, the polar bears have very very uh, sensitive sense of smell. So it means that they can smell the seal in the distance of 30 kilometers and the seal might be hidden under the snow uh, that is uh, one meter thick. So it's very, um, very good adaptation. It is uh, the, the polar bears has also very special way of uh, hunting because for they are very patient. They are uh, waiting. Uh, for a long time close to the breathing holes that uh, are made by seals and after that when they took away the prey the seal out of the breathing hole they smash it with the mm, the front paws so it it looks like uh, yeah it, it looks terrible uh, you can see it for example on some films on the YouTube, but it is the way of, of hunting that the method that polar bear, bears used. And of course, when there are a lack of food, um, polar bears are able to starve for about nine months. They have, they might have fat reserves and they can survive without eating anything. Uh, but of course, they are, uh, they are, um, they are able also to change their uh, dietary habits and go inland to take some eggs, small birds, chicks, berries, uh, some plants. They also are an ingredient of uh, the polar bear's diet. So not, not only seals, not only meat, uh, the polar bears are able also to eat something different. 
Um, when I, they um, are walk, walking on ice, they have, uh, as you know, a very big pores, and the surface of the, the pores is um, very, um, has a very uh, special fracture, texture, uh, it, and it is like tires of the car, um, and the traction, and it helps to improve the traction. So it means that uh, they don't slip on a, a icy surface, and uh, the sharp claws also help them to walk effectively. Of course, when we spot a polar bear in that field, we can't run away from it. So if the polar bear are going to attack us, uh, there is no way of escape. We are too slow to, to escape. So uh, only the only way is to use a gun. Of course, it's uh, the last solution, but uh, sometimes uh, we, have, uh, we haven't any other choice. On the right side, there is one of a very effective way of uh, scaring away the polar bear. Uh, because uh, we sometimes uh, don't need to use guns to uh, to say the polar bear that that is not the place for 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 him or her. Why? Uh, that female polar bear on that photo is very curious uh, because of the rain gauge. It is one of the scientific equipment that was located close to the Polish Polar Station in Hornsund. And uh, because of the curiosity, polar bears are able to destroy sometimes uh, the equipment, uh, buildings and so on. So using flare guns, uh, as you see on the uh, right photo, is very effective because um, it is uh, sound and usual for polar bears. Uh, there is uh, something like fire, you know, and uh, it uh, may cause that uh, polar bear is afraid of it and it run away. So, yeah, we don't have any trouble with them anymore. Cold protection, of course, another adaptation of polar bear to the Arctic climate, the very thick fur that is uh, built of two layers, so it is a very effective way of uh, protection against the cold. And uh, another thing, when we talk a little bit about the hunting methods, uh, look at the photo on the right side. There are a female polar bear with the, their cub. Mm, I know that it's for me. It's hard to say which one is the mother and which one is the cub, because um, the cubs might stay with the mother for three, even three years. So very often they are the same size of the mother. Mm, so, but why? I know that uh, there are mother with the, the small polar bear because, uh, as I said in the very beginning of that lesson. Uh, it is not usual. Uh, polar bears uh, aren't observed uh, in the pairs on a, in the groups walking um, through the Arctic areas. They are uh, alone. They are living alone. It's like uh, their lifestyle. So uh, that uh, that couple, let's say, that was observed uh, for a few days. In the in the area of Polish Polar Station Hornsund, so the the people who worked that time in the base were um, sure, absolutely sure that we uh, that they had an opportunity to see a mother with a cub. So uh, on that photo, you can see very clearly how long is the neck of the polar bear, and how what kind of shape their um, head have. So it is very helpful um, during hunting because when the polar bear wants to catch the seal that emerge uh, from in the breathing hole to catch a breath, um, the long neck is, a ver is, is, very, um, is very helpful because it, had, it can put uh, the, the head directly into the water and uh, take away 
the seal onto the sea surface. Also, the paws of the polar bear are very enormous, let's say, and as you can see, it is a very nice adaptation of walking on the sea surface. So it is polar bear might be uh, very fast. So that's why we humans can't escape when we see the polar bear. Polar bear is uh, uh, um, the main predator in the Arctic. Uh, so it means that uh, there is no other predators, no other species <clears throat> that might attack him. So he is, she is a real king of the Arctic. Um, Norwegian scientists, because we were talking about uh, polar bears in the Swal in the Barents Sea area, uh, are monitoring uh, for many years the polar bears' behaviors, roads, and so on. Uh, the uh, Norwegian Polar Institute, that is located in Tromsø in the northern part of the Norway. Uh, carried, carry on, carries on many research on polar bears. So one of them is the monitoring system of uh, polar bear roads during the winter time. And thanks to it, because uh, the animals has a special colors with GPS, we can update, obtain the data what position of the polar bears are. So there, there is not only one program, scientific program, uh, but uh, some organizations like WWF um, also has like something like species, species track, the tracker, and they are monitoring the roads of the polar bears. So you can find the information about this uh, in internet. Uh, so it is uh, very, of course, the that there are not so many of, of the polar bears observed because it's not that easy. Uh, but it uh, gave uh, some pieces of information to for the scientists about the, the age approximately, uh, about the weight, of course, um, before the color is put on the polar bear's neck, uh, the animal needs to be, um, um needs to yeah the, uh, it is not possible to to put it on a on the neck of a animal spotted you know in in the field so uh, the scientific scientists use a special uh, sleeping pills or or sleeping medicines uh, to do it safely without killing uh, and uh, hurting the animal Hibernation, or a state similar to hibernation, is a typical for polar bears, but only pregnant females. Uh, because it's not typical for polar bears to fall asleep during the winter time, so they take a nap regularly, but it's not a real winter sleep during that period. They are active uh, all year round. Only pregnant females, um, in the beginning of September, uh, make uh, d some dance in in the snow or in some safe areas close to the glaciers, and they are waiting for giving birth to cubs in the beginning of the new year, January, February, and they are in a state of a hibernation. So only in that case we can see about a state that might be a little bit similar to the winter sleep, uh, typical, for example, for the brown bears that uh, we can observe in our climatic zone. We know that polar bears uh, are fond of seals, but sometimes it's very hard to hunt for that animal because of the decreasing sea ice. Uh, for example, sometimes the populations of <clears throat> seals are not so big to hunt for them. Uh, the polar bear might be might be um, in a not so 
good health conditions. There are many factors that might cause that uh, polar bears are unable to catch a seal. So, for example, um, other dead animals like whales uh, might be also very um, nutritious source of food. Uh, and the other source of food, but and of course not nutritious one, uh, are rubbish. And unfortunately, it is uh, on the one side uh, the very very simple way of obtaining a food, but on the second side is sometimes the only way of obtaining food. Mm, so polar bears may approach to the humans villages cities in the arctic to look for uh, food in garbage dams and of course it might cause some conflicts with humans and uh, in that uh, situations the polar bears are very dangerous for the for the people so um, there is an information and you can see when you search for for it in the internet you can see a lot of them um, the situation was very unusual because in siberia there were 52 individuals 52 polar bears that it was observed in one uh, vill russian village and they went uh, for to the garbage dump to search for food. That was a very unusual situation because there was uh, not so many um, polar bears observed in the same moment before, but it was uh, caused by the very serious situation connected with the lack of the food. So, um, yeah, we can, because of the climate change, we can observe a very untypical <clears throat> behaviors for the polar bears. Another threat, um, because we mentioned the conflicts, potential conflicts with humans hunting, um, is a microplastic in the Arctic. Microplastic, there are very small pieces of plastic that uh, nowadays might be observed everywhere. In the air, in the snow, um, in the sea ice, in the sea, very deep, uh, the scientific uh, research improve, uh, say it and uh, show it to us very clearly. There are many scientific programs organized uh, to monitor how many uh, microplastic we, ca we can have in the Arctic. Of course, the microplastic uh, is not produced uh, in that region of our planet. It is transported, for example, by ocean currents, by rains, um, snowfalls uh, from different countries. And uh, unfortunately, um, are eaten with uh, other, uh, other type of foods by many species. So um, there are also uh, some investigation what would be the impact of the microplastic on uh, polar bears and would be for example what would be the impact on the humans because it is also we are also the the the, the species that is uh, uh, that lives in the planet and the microplastic is a huge problem for everybody not for only for the, the animals um, uh, we know that, uh, for example, the plastic rubbish is very uh, extremely dangerous to polar bears. Why? And not only for polar bears, uh, because uh, when they eat it, uh, they might have full stomach of plastic uh, that uh, can't be digested. And uh, in that situation, polar bears can't eat anything like their normal uh, food, like uh, meat or something, and they they are starving. So in the end, they might die of hunger. So it is the influence, unfortunately, of human uh, activity um, in the planet, of uh, the huge production of uh, plastic waste and uh, the, its distribution around uh, the world uh, due to ocean currents, for example. 
Uh, I said a little bit about the convention concerning the conservation of polar bears in Svalbard uh, archipelago. That was a document signed in 73 by not only the Norway, but as well by US, Canada, Denmark and um, Russia. So uh, it decreased the hunting um, around uh, many areas in the Arctic. And for example, in Svalbard, when the agreement was signed, there were only a few uh, polar bear species, less than 100. So nowadays we can see that, for example, on the Spitsbergen Island, we have uh, approximately 3000 individuals, but in the 70s, it was less than 100. So it was the very last moment to start the protection of the polar bears. And uh, there is uh, on the right side, the photo taken from Norwegian uh, Svalbard Posten. It is the newspaper published uh, on the Svalbard archipelago from 40s, I think it is very uh, very, uh, it is a newspaper with a very long tradition and the only one uh, with such a northernmost uh, location. Mm, and that situation occurred in 2013 when I was, when I, when I worked in Polish Polar Station Forsund. That was very close to our station uh, in that uh, small hütte. Three people uh, sleep for a few for a couple of days. They spend their uh, vacation there, and unfortunately, they had an encounter with the polar bear. It was a very young male polar bear, and it was really hangry. Um, and uh, polar bear started attack the people. They were inside that small house. Uh, they, of course, uh, try to scary it away using many methods because they they didn't want to kill it but uh, after one hour of uh, trying everything they decided to, to to protect themselves because the situation was uh, worse and worse and they kill it uh, we talked about that people because after the accident they visited our station uh, of course, the governor of Svalbard uh, was present in the in the place of the accident. The police, Norwegian police, investigated the um, whole situation. Of course, that that was not the the people's fault. They um, they used the gun on purpose. So it was in such kind of situation. Unfortunately, um, the polar bears might be killed, but. Uh, it is a kind of protect, protection. And uh, how about the future of polar bears? Um, they are able to adapt, but we don't know what kind of direction it might have. So that's why the, the people, um, the scientists uh, are carrying out uh, many scientific programs on Conserv conservation of polar bears, of on uh, observing their behaviors. For example, the um, two, not two, one, one year ago. So it is a very, let's say, new situation, and um, was observed uh, very close to the Polish base in, in, on Spitsbergen. In and the people observe very unusual behavior of polar bear because uh, it hunts, hunted for reindeers. Uh, reindeers are too... Uh... Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, it is the last slide of the, my, my presentation. So thank you for the participation. Yeah, so I only tell a little bit about that, uh, that case and we will finish. Uh, yes, uh, the reindeers are too fast for polar bears, so in the field it is uh, uh, it it can't uh, hunt for it. But uh, one polar bear had an idea how to cope with it. How it uh, um, 
it it's, uh, tried to um, it forced the reindeer to go to the seashore, to the sea area, and it uh, can't escape because from the one side there was open water and on the other side there was waiting polar bear. So the reindeer has no choice um, and has no way of escape and was killed by a bear. Uh, and uh, in using that method, the polar bear attacked two reindeers. Uh, the scientist working in Polish Polar Station uh, describe the whole situation on the Facebook profile because it was very unusual situation, very interesting one. So maybe uh, polar bears are able to evolve using other hunting methods like this, like that one, because it was something, something strange, but very effective uh, um, as a result. So we will see. Uh, yes, as I promised, is this the last slide of the presentation. If you are interested in more materials concerning polar bear, I recommend you use the toolkit connected with polar bear. Watch other recordings from webinars on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash edoarctic. EduArctic 2, from polar research to scientific passion, innovative nature education in Poland and Norway receives a grant of 240,000 euros received from Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway under EEA funds.